What's up, Discovery Church Online? Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions or want to learn more about who we are as a church, then find us online at ilovediscovery.church or you can download our app free from wherever you download apps from. Today, our senior pastor, Jason Hanish, will be sharing how life change all begins in your mind and your pattern of thinking. Hey, let me jump into our, our series here, The Best year ever. I'm, I'm believing God for it for my life, you guys. I'm, I'm believing it for your life. I'm believing it for Discovery Church. Like, as your pastor, I, I want to see you go from glory to glory. How many of you know that's the journey that God has for you? Like, like, He wants you to be transformed into the image of His Son. And that every year, like, as you are walking with God and experiencing Him, like, you should be looking more like Him. Like, you should not be the same you this year that you were last year. You shouldn't, and I, it's, it's my heart to lead you in such a way that, that you would be transformed continuously in that, and that, yes, in Jesus' name, that this can be the best year ever. Here we are, though, beginning another year, making resolutions. How do we, how do we though, how do we make resolutions that last? That's the question, right? How do we make some resolutions that actually last? Here's what I do know, your first uh, note here, write it down. You will never change your life until you change the way you think. You will never change your life until you change the way you think. You see, your life doesn't change in the doing. It life does not change in the actions and the lists of your resolutions. It begins to change in your thinking. In your, in your thoughts, our thoughts are so powerful. I was thinking about my own personal life and every pivotal moment that I have had in my walk with Christ and in my life, there was always a, a change of thinking that preeminated it. I was looking at, in my own life, there was every, every new experience I had with God, every step of faith, every miracle where God just showed up, every time like there was, there was first a change in my thinking process that 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 produce something new in my life. Your life is going to be marked by how well you control and direct your thoughts. So I'll submit to you, listen, if the, the one change that you need to make in order to experience the best year ever is to change the way you think. It's to change the way you think. I don't know if you've ever wondered what makes certain people successful and other people not successful. There's been a lot of studies and millions of dollars poured into that question. How do people, how are successful people successful and others not successful? There's a, some popular answers here or some. Successful people have better opportunities than me. That's what makes them successful. Successful people have better families or successful people have better education than I was afforded. Or successful people didn't get the bad breaks that that I got. And, you know, the truth is, there's another reason why some people are successful, successful and others are not. Uh, it could be that you're, you're, you're not thinking right. There's a problem in the way we're thinking. In this series, you're going to hear a convincing argument from God's Word. Not, this is the Word of God. If you want to change your life, don't, don't just change your actions. Start by changing your mind. If you want to have the best year ever, you want to experience a better life, a new life, you want, to, you want to experience, then it starts with changing the way you think. Romans 12 and 2, let God transform you into a new person. God wants to make you brand new. Like you should be going, the experience of the Christian life should be one that is constantly being renewed. Constantly being renewed. Constantly being renewed by changing the way you you think, and so we want to change some things about our lives, and here we go in another year making resolutions. And, and, and you know what a New Year's resolution is, right? It's, it's what you give up for New Year's that you start doing again in March, right? That's the New Year's resolution for many people. Um, but the truth is, you guys, some people have some stinking thinking. That's what I'm calling it today. We got some stinking thinking uh, going on, but the, in the difficulty with experiencing the best year ever isn't isn't just developing some good habits, but it's escaping the old habits, the old mindsets, 
That's, could, could it be that your new habits that you're trying to develop, and you got the right resolution list, you got the right actions down, but could it be that those are always and continuously every year thwarted by uh, your old mindset, by not changing the way we think? Studies reveal that the average person has 500 thoughts a day. The average human has, has 500 thoughts a day. And, and check this out. It was the University of Nevada did this study. They said that 85% of those thoughts are negative. 85%. So, so what would that look like, you guys? If we were to, and most of those thoughts, you guys, are preconditioned, pre-programmed, unconscious, just, just modes of thinking. What would it look like if we were to actually control and direct our thoughts in such a way that pleases God, that allows us to walk with God and experiences lasting change into our life. But I want to take you on a journey of transforming the way you and I think in order for us to walk with God and experience true change. That's what I like to do as we enter this new year in this new series, and I promise you, you take this journey with me. If you just change the way you think, hey, it's not me, it's Bible. The Bible says you'll be a new person in 2018 if you just change the way you think. So, so let me start with asking this question here. Where does bad thinking come from? I mean, 85% of our thinking, average human being, 85% of it is bad. It's stinking thinking. And so where does, where does, all, that, where does all that come from? A lot of us don't know where... Or how we got it. We know, have you ever been trapped? Like, like, have you ever caught yourself thinking wrong? Like, you just, like, like for maybe you were sitting on something for a while, and all of a sudden you just go, man, what am I thinking about? You're not alone. You are not alone. 85%, okay, of our thoughts. We just, we just get caught. And I just, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation right now in God's house. That, that some of you actually know. You know where, what, where your, your triggers are and where you get caught into negative, cynical thinking, where your thoughts can take you down the wrong path. But others of you do not know. You, don't, you do not have awareness in this area of your life. And your thoughts continue to trip you up. And your thoughts continue to infiltrate your relationships and create toxic situations in your career, in your finances, all over your life because of the way You're thinking, so I pray right now for revelation in God's house that you would understand where that stuff comes from. So let me give you let me give you a few areas of where stinking thinking, (laughs) where some stinking thinking can come from. Write some notes with me today. Number one, we let our mental self image define us. That's where some of those negative bad thoughts can come from. Most of us, our self image goes way back to our childhood. And so maybe some things that were said to us or maybe what our parents even said to us. Unfortunately, some of, for so many of us, our beliefs about ourselves are just false. They're wrong. What we think about ourselves are wrong. You, you remember the, the fun house where you used to go in the fun house and you get in front of those funny mirrors? You get in front of one mirror and it makes you look all wide like this. You get in front of another mirror and it makes you look all distorted. And then you get another mirror and it makes you all skinny and long and stuff. It, m- listen, most of our image is, is, is distorted. We're looking through something that is distorting the image of ourself. Uh, and there's a person in the Bible that had the same problem. Before he became king, no one believed in David. He was number eight of eight children. He was the runt of the litter, the last of the litter. His dad didn't believe in him. His dad overlooked at him. Didn't even, he discounted him. King Saul overlooked him, didn't think he can go fight Goliath. Goliath overlooked him as an opponent. Everybody, so no wonder David writes in the Psalms and songs, he writes one of them, Psalm 22, he says, but I am a worm and not a man, scorned by man and despised by the people. David had to overcome a negative self-image. He was looking through the wrong lenses of what other people said he was and not let it define him. You cannot let your view of you define you. Do you know that? You cannot let others' view of you define you. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. And so, so many of us have the wrong thoughts about our life, about us, because we let our own self-image define us. Here's another area that we get bad thinking. We let our past program us. We let our past program us. We have negative experiences 
in our past. Maybe you stepped out and did something and it didn't work out the way you thought it would. Maybe it was a new job you had high hopes for and, and, and it was just a negative experience. Or maybe you stepped out and you actually failed at something. You tried the business. You tried a ministry. You tried a group. You, you tried something and, and it just was not a good experience. And now every time you're, you're going to step out again, you kind of feel like you're, you're hitting a ceiling and something that's preventing you in your past is programmed you. Maybe it's the hurtful words that people said over you. Maybe, maybe those things are replaying and programmed into your mind that you keep repeating to yourself or maybe even the past mistakes. Um, we did a whole series on this over Christmas called The Ghost of Christmas Past. If you missed the Christmas series, you weren't here for that, I encourage you to go online, listen to that, watch that. If your past has become your programming, your operating system, David, again, be, this became his life. He had some bad programming from his past. In Psalm 13 and 2, he said, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And every day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? I know I'm not going to belabor this too much because I just did a series on this. But, but uh, let me just give you one scripture up here on the screen. I don't know if it, it found its way in your notes. Um, Isaiah 43, verse 18. A good New Year's Eve scripture for you if you struggle with this area if your past is programming you and your past is is producing some thoughts that are negative or stinking thinking some bad thoughts listen this is what god says forget the former things hey you want to enter the new year better new year you want a new year and a new you you want the best year ever you need to forget those former things and do not dwell on the past he says behold i do a new thing it springs up in jesus name but some of us, we let, we let our past program us, and that's where bad thinking comes from. Here's another area. We let the world infect us. The culture of the world, the, the media influence infecting us with their values. We got pretty little liars showing us how to live and Victoria bearing all her secrets. That's what's going on with us today. And we don't even know it. You know, many of us don't realize that the world is polluting our minds. We don't, we, we're not catching it. It's just happening kind of, subtly it's happening unnoticeably and scientists have done study after study that says that you never really forget an image or a scene that you've seen you never really forget it it just gets filed away even if you don't consciously remember that thing that something can in the future trigger that thought from coming in that scene from coming up into your mind again in other words garbage in garbage out what you put into your mind will inevitably bear fruit in your behavior and your beliefs. In fact, if you, I would say, if, if you are comfortable watching trashy entertainment and it doesn't bother you anymore, it's a warning sign that you've already passed that threshold. I mean, because, I mean, we used to watch something and you cringe. Bat your eye, bat your eyes, right? Change the channel, do something. But now, now, if you've gotten to a place where you are comfortable now with it, it, it just, it, you're infected. The world has infected us. Do you not think that that's going to affect your thought life now? And we wonder why 85% of our thinking is negative. The world is infecting us. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, don't become partners with those who reject God. Like, don't link up, he's saying. Don't, don't link up with those who reject God. God himself put it this way. I'm going to live in you, he said. I'm going to move into you. I'm going to be your God, and you're going to be my people. So leave the corruption and the compromise. Leave it for good, says God. Don't link up with those who will pollute you. And I, I know it goes against popularity, you know, you know, popular thinking, and it can be difficult. But at some point, we got to get away from the infection. At some point, if you want, if you want a, a better year, if you want to experience the best God has for you, at some point you've got to get away from the infection. This is where kind of small groups become so vital. We'll talk about this more later on in this series. But you need to be linked up with some healthy people. You, 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 need, to, you need to cut the ties of corruption and compromise that are producing infection and the wrong thoughts and get linked up and partnered up with healthy people. People, this is why small groups exist here at Discovery. We're launching them at the end of this month, moving into February. You'll hear more about them in this series because your relationships have a power, powerful impact in the thoughts that you are thinking. Here's the last one I'll give you um, where this bad thinking comes from, and that is we let the devil accuse us. We let the devil 
accuse us. A war is going on right now. Do you know that? There is a battle waging right now all around us, and some of us aren't even aware of it. It's, you know what it is? It's the battle of your mind. And uh, Next week, the title of my message is The Battlefield of the Mind. There is a war waging in the spirit realms, in the mind. The devil's number one target is, you know where? Your thoughts. That's, where, that's his number one target. He knows that if he, he can get you to believe his lies, he can manipulate your life. He can control it. John 8, 44, you know it. When he, the devil, lies, he speaks his native language, for he is the liar and the father of lies. How does he do it? He tries to get us to believe his lies. Like a bully standing on the other side of the fence. He can't touch you, but he can taunt you day and night. We have to overcome his accusations with better thoughts. It's time, church, listen, it's time to start thinking about what we're thinking about. That's the problem right now is we're not putting any thought into our thought life and our thoughts are running away from us. It's time to start thinking. Why? Because Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You know what that means? Whatever you're thinking about is what you will become. Whatever direction your thoughts are pointed is where your life will lead you. So every week during this series, we're going to show you how to renew your mind so that you can experience the best year ever. Let me give you five reasons just to kind of introduce this topic, and I'm going to give you some applications with it, but five reasons why good thinking matters. Write these down. Number one, because everything begins with a thought. Everything begins begins with a thought so everything that you're doing well and everything that you're not doing so well has begun with a thought it's fueled by thinking that happened first so in other words if you try to change the behavior without changing the thinking that produced the behavior you'll never really change it, that's why it's so short-lived often times it all begins in your mind can i pass on a discipline to you I am very careful of what goes into my mind the first hour of every day. The first hour of every day. I, I, I'm just very careful at how I start my, my day because if, you, if you're not careful, and I'm, I, this is hard for me because I'm a task-oriented person. And so when I want to get up, I want, I want to get going. I want to start. I want to get on the email. I want to get on my, catch my text messages, get on my task, get, to, get moving. And so it takes a lot of discipline for me to just for the first hour because the devil knows, man, you just, you pick that thing up. You know, this phone, it will, it is a sore, it is the source of many of your negative thoughts. You mean, Some of you don't, even, don't know it, but I mean, you pick up that phone, you start looking on, you know, social media and stuff, and the devil will know. He'll put that one thing on there just to stir you up, you know. So now your day is starting off, or maybe you start watching the news, and it's all bad news, and you're wondering, why am I feeling so down today? Why am I, why am I so depressed? Why am I so angry? Why am I so frustrated? Why? why? I had this one lady tell me, I, I wake up grumpy every day, and sometimes I let him sleep in. That's funny. I don't care what you say. That's funny. But some of you, you're, you wake up pretty grumpy every day, and it's because, listen, it's because of what you're doing first. It's because of what you're putting in first. I try to make sure that I set the course of my mind at the very beginning of the day. Everything begins with a thought. You know, every, everything. So you don't just, listen, that's everything. You don't just commit adultery one day. That, that action that you committed started with a thought. Okay, you don't just end up in debt, okay, one day all credit cards and everything. You don't, just, you don't just end up in debt one day. It started with a thought of how you're thinking about your life and thinking about your finances. On the other hand, listen, everything begins with a thought, meaning not just the bad, but life change begins with a thought. God wants to grow you and develop you in his image and likeness, beginning with a thought. Everything begins with a thought. Romans 12, 2, another translation of it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So God wants to change the way you think. He wants to give you another way you think about yourself, about your life, about your problems and your challenges and your marriage and your, your, your finance. He just wants to give you another way of thinking that will produce life and real change. Here's the second reason why good thinking matters, and that is what we think determines how we feel. What we think determines how we feel. Do you realize that your mind can affect how your body feels? 
Absolutely, man. You, you, will, you will speak, act, react like the person you think you are. Now, what's going on in your head? What we think determines how we feel. So you may be blaming your spouse. You may be blaming you know, your teachers or your neighbors or the economy. But trust me, none of those things are making you feel the way you feel today. It's your response to those things. It's your thought life in response to those things that's determining how you feel right now. Because truth be known, every one of us lives in that world of problems and trial and difficulty. It's just not everybody responds the same way and thinks about it the same way. Um, I got a big ask for you, church, a big challenge. I want, I want you to start the year off with this. So start your, like, your next tomorrow as we begin 21 days of prayer and fasting, can I encourage you for seven days, all Discovery Church, just to fast as much media as you possibly can, okay? Just, uh, just uh, as much as you possibly can just to get off and to stay off, like, Instagram and Facebook. I mean, I, social media, I've been doing some research on what it is doing to our thought life and how it is changing and directing and infecting and influencing the direction of your thoughts just for seven, for one week, just no. No, I'm telling you, this whole social media thing is, is it's serious now. It's become a big influence of how we live our life and how we are thinking our thoughts. So if you want to think new thoughts, I just, I just need to challenge you here for one week. It's serious. I actually was watching a video, and I wanted to share the video with you guys about how serious this whole social media thing is. Check out this video. My name's Jeff, and I'm an Instagram husband. Behind every cute girl on Instagram is a guy like me and a brick wall. My name's Trey, I'm an Instagram husband. I've had to delete all of the apps off my phone just to make more room for more photos. Hi, I'm Nate, and I'm an Instagram husband. I love my life so much. My job in pictures is to make her look good. I want you to just take a picture like, like higher, no higher, higher, higher. Babe, higher. I'm basically a human selfie stick. Go. Last year for Christmas, I actually got her a selfie stick. And then she got mad at me because she thought I was just trying to get out of taking photos. What are you doing in here? Taking a picture of all your stuff? Yeah, this is a good moment. I support that. Oh wait, just a second. I should probably comment on this. <laughs> it helps me out if I'm the first one to comment. Cute. It's become a pretty big problem. Um, we take so long to get anywhere because we're taking pictures of our feet. Oh, shoe pick, shoe pick. No, this one's better. No, no, stop, stop. Move your foot. Okay, can we hold hands? One more, one more. I like this leaf right here. Yo, yeah, we used to eat our food. Now we just take pictures of it. No, you can't do that. I haven't taken a shot of that yet. God, we have to show everybody how much we enjoy our lives together. Yeah, it's really enjoyable. If you or someone you know is an Instagram husband, help is out there. Go to InstagramHusband.com and see how millions of men just like you have found hope. I'm an Instagram husband. I'm an Instagram husband. I'm an Instagram husband. I'm an Instagram husband. Babe. That's a real problem, you guys. That's all I'm saying. It's just, it's a real problem today. Uh, but seriously, one week, you guys, one week without, without your social media. Look, one week without, if you can do it as much as you can, one week without TV, one week without movies, one week without secular music. Now, don't get all legalistic on me or anything. Just do as much as you can. But just one week, you kids, one week without video games, okay? One week, you adults, one week without video games, okay? No, just stop killing people on your screen for just one week is all I'm saying. Just one week. We can check it out, man. Just see what, and I'm not even, I'm not even asking you to do this like as a sacrifice of fast, of an offering 
to God. You know, that's not what I'm, I'm asking you to do this as a test. Just a test to test out this next verse to see if God's word is real and true. That if you think about these things, if you think about what is true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable, if anything's excellent or praiseworthy, if you think about these things, look at this, the God of peace will be with you. You give it one week and see if you are not walking in the peace of God this next week. Look, I, I'm telling you, I'm, as your pastor, there is nothing more I want from you or for you as you enter this next year than this verse right here to be a reality in your life but i i listen i cannot make like the bad experiences of 2017 go away and i cannot make some of the challenges and there will there will be some challenges just because we're declaring and believing the best year ever doesn't mean that there's challenges and setbacks you know that's part of experiencing the best year ever it really is god's going to bring something still by your by your path for you to handle and work through and grow through doesn't mean it can't be the best year ever look i can't change those circumstances but i can lead you to someone and somewhere that can give you a peace in the middle of those circumstances what we think determines how we feel here's the third thing you need to know about your thoughts and that is that our thoughts will determine where you are at this time next year. Yep, your thoughts, our thoughts will determine our destiny. You've heard this. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a lifestyle. Sow a lifestyle, reap a destiny. It starts with the thought and it ends with your destiny. If you don't like where you're going, change your thoughts. Let me, let me say it this way. You are today wherever your thoughts have led you. You will be next year at this time wherever your thoughts have led you. If you see yourself as a loser, you're going to end up in a large part acting like a loser. All right. If you see yourself, on the other hand, like or as a victim, you're going to let people probably victimize you. But on the other hand, if you see yourself as, as a child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, set free, an overcomer, fully healed, protected by angels, first, not last, above, not beneath. You will walk in the direction your thoughts are pointed. You will walk in the direction your thoughts are pointed. If you see yourself as successful, you'll tend to repeat the successes you've had in the past. It all depends on how you are thinking. You say, I don't know about that, Pastor Jason. That sounds like a bunch of positive thinking mumbo-jumbo right there. I don't know. No, actually, this is Bible. This is scripture. Look at Romans chapter 8 with me. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about. So you thought, oh, you thought it was about your actions and your habits and, and the, the, those things that you're doing, the things that you can't stop doing. That's not really the problem. That's not the Bible doesn't, actually says that's not the problem. What you're doing is not the problem. He says it's what you're thinking about is the problem. It's, it's those who, it's, it's, we think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Spirit, how many want to be controlled by the Spirit? How many want to let the Holy Spirit move you and guide you and lead you and speak through you? Those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, it doesn't say go to church more. It says think about things that please the Spirit. I'm not against church. I want you to be at church, but that's not, that's the do. Before the action and the do and your behaviors and your habits needs to be a thought change. If you want to be controlled by the Spirit, don't just jump into 21 days of prayer and fasting. Don't just jump into attending church every, don't just jump into reading your Bible every day. Start with changing your mind about your life, about God. Start with changing the way you think first. And then it'll be, it'll be a long lasting change, I'm telling you. He says, but those, if your sinful nature controls your mind, he says, there's going to be death. There's, it'll produce death in your life. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, there is life and peace. There are neural pathways that we've created in our mind. You see, when we repeat thought patterns, it creates, it creates like a, like, it's likened to a cornfield. If you see a tall cornfield, and if you start to walk, take like a, a path through, the, through a tall cornfield, and you start tearing down the, those large tusks and, and you just keep walking that path, eventually in that cornfield, you're going to have a little pathway, right? Your neural pathways are like that in your mind. The, the thoughts that you continue to think and the patterns of thoughts that you continue to think creates this ease of a neural pathway where you have just a propensity now to be negative 
a propensity now to, to be cynical or to think that way, we're going to teach you in this series how to reprogram your thoughts, how to create a different pathway that is controlled by the Holy Spirit, a pathway that pleases God, that produces fruit, and that brings lasting life change. That's what we need. That's, in order to experience the best year ever, that's what we need. We need to change the way we think. Here's number four. Successful people think differently than others. I mean, it's successful people. Jesus was successful because um, he just did not see things as they are. He saw things as they could be. That's what made him successful. Look at, look at this, Mark chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. I mean, he's looking at them, meaning the crowd. These are just ordinary people. He's saying, okay, you, 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 you. Okay, with man, with you, this is impossible, but not with God. So can you say that last sentence with me? All things are possible with God. I want to challenge you to stop focusing on the impossibilities. Start focusing on the God possibilities. Like there is a miracle in the making in 2018. There are, I'm telling you, we see it all the time. There was, there was a man on his deathbed about to get the, the plug pulled here at Discovery. The wife said, no, we're going to pray. So we prayed. He is now attending the church and fully healthy, okay? There's, there, is, there is marriages that have been restored, uh, wives that have been praying for their husbands and who are now serving their husbands, now serving on fire for God. There is a miracle in the making in 2018 for you if you just think differently about it. Just think differently. Stop thinking with that mind and stop trying to fit God into your brain, to the size of your brain. If you do that, you'll limit God and you'll limit yourself in 2018. You need to start thinking God size. Successful people, they just think differently. Here's number five. Here's the last one. I just want you to know this. I want you to believe this, church, that we can change the way we think. You can. Yeah, you've created some neural pathways. Yeah, there's, there's, there, you've created some patterns in your, but we can change the way we think. God wants to cleanse us through the washing by the water of his word. The word of God, the Bible counteracts the negative input that we receive all day. In this one hour time that you're going to have, that I'm challenging you to have, in this one hour time that you're going to just dedicate to God, can I encourage you to put the word of God somewhere in there? Just just get the word of God in you. Why? Because Hebrews 4 says that the word of God is living and active. It is alive in your life. It, it has, produces activity and action, the word of God. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Look at this. And it judges your thoughts and the attitudes of your heart. You see, sometimes we're not aware of the thoughts that we're thinking, the attitudes that we have, the infection that we're walking around with. But when we put the word of God in, it counteracts it. It brings to light the thoughts that we're thinking, the attitudes that, that the enemy has deposited in our heart. Without the word of God in our life, we would, we would continuously walk around unaware and infected. You need the word of God. And listen, in, in your devotion time, that you're going to take, in Jesus' name, you're going to take this one, this first week and that first hour, you're going to get some of the Word of God in you, all right? And I, I always encourage, if you don't have a reading plan, I always encourage the Bible app. If you haven't downloaded, download the Bible app. And get on there, find the plan called One Year Bible, okay? The One Year Bible. It gives you some of the Old Testament, some of the New Testament, a little bit of the Psalms and a proverb every day. It gives you a little bit of everything every day so you don't just get caught in one book and get caught up. It's it. it And in your reading, you're not trying to read through and check off your devotion. You're not trying to read through the Bible. What what you are going to do is you're going to try to grab hold of one truth from the Word of God, one scripture, one thought, and you're going to let it dominate your thinking for the rest of the day. You're going to let it point your thoughts in a certain direction, meditating on that, walking in that throughout the rest of your day. And the Bible says that you will be made new and the God of peace will be with you if you do that. That's what the Word of God says. Deuteronomy chapter 30, God gives us this choice. And I want to leave it with you today. He says, God says, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death. I mean, it's yours. I mean, this year, you can choose. You can choose. It is set before you that if you want to produce life or death, if you want blessings, or curses. 
Man, he's given he's given you the choice for that. Do you know that? Like God has given you the choice if you are going to produce life or produce death. And it all starts. Everything starts with a thought. And he says, now choose life. So that not only you, look at the legacy of this verse. So not, not only you, but that your children may live. Choose life. Dr. Charles Cooley, he's the dean of American sociology. He says this, your self-esteem your self-worth or image is determined to a large degree by what you think the people or the person that matters most to you thinks about you. So he says the way that we, we get our self-image is, is by the person who, we, who is the most important person in our life. What they think about me is how I am going to see myself. I want to suggest to you that you make Jesus Christ the most important person in your life. That if you want to experience the best year ever, if you really do, the first step in experiencing the best year ever is to make Jesus Christ the most important person of your life. Come on, can we bow our heads and just start right there? Some of you are here today, and, and maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've never kind of positioned your life to just, to just make Jesus a priority. And what The Bible just calls that salvation. When you make Jesus the priority of your life, that's what salvation is. It's surrendering your life to him and making Jesus the priority, the number one. Surrendering your life to him. If you're here today and you want to do that, you want to buy into this purpose thing, into this new life thing, and, and I'm not saying it's going to be perfect and always rosy, but I am saying that God wants to change you into a brand new person by starting with this one thought, making him the most important person of your life. That's where it starts. So with every head bowed and eye closed, if that's you, I want to pray this prayer with you. I'm not going to have you come up to the front. I'll single you out. I just want to pray a prayer that prioritizes that. A surrender your life to Jesus. Starting this year off right in the right direction. With every be- head bowed and eye closed, do me a favor. If you want me to pray for you, you want to be included in this prayer, lift up your hand right now. Lift your eye. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it up. Yes, yes. Praise God. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Go ahead and put your hands down for just a moment. Come on, pray this prayer with me. I want you to whisper it right where you're seated. Anyone can join in. Just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Today, I make you the most important person in my life. I'm no longer going to live for me. I'm no longer going to live for others. Jesus, I declare, I will live for for you from this day forward i surrender my life to you come live inside of me and change me from the inside out god i speak that over every person now in jesus name that that we're not going to get caught up in resolutions behaviors and habits new ones that need to be developed we're going to first focus on changing the way we think god do a work inside out shed light into areas of our hearts and our attitudes and our thoughts that need to be changed that need to be renewed god make us into a new person in this year in jesus name i declare the best year ever as we are changed and transformed from glory to glory no longer are we going to base our self-image on us no longer are we going to let our past program us god no longer are we going to let the world infect us and the devil accuse us we're going to walk free in our thought life god we're going to change it right here and experience the best year i declare it right now and i receive that in jesus name amen and amen. Come on, if you receive that, will you give God some praise? Amen. We are so excited about all God is doing in and through your life, and we would love to help you on your journey. To find out what your next steps are in your relationship with Christ, go to ilovediscovery.church forward slash next steps. At Discovery, it's our mission to teach people to love God passionately, love each other authentically, and change the world for the cause of Christ. And it's that mission that drives everything we do as a church. Join us next week for part two of the best year ever.